Hello, I'm Annette Sohn. I'm the director of the Treat Asia program of ANFAR, the Foundation for AIDS Research. As we have our debaters prepare and come to the stage, I'd like to ask the team to show the video about how you can use your smartphone to pr participate in the e-voting that we will use twice during this session. There we go. Greetings again. Yeah, F9 for word and reading. Um, no. And F and reading, and then F9 for the song. Find the search at the bottom of your screen. In the search bar on the top of the screen, type QR code reader. Select the application that you need and install it. Then go back to your home screen and open the application. Okay, thank you all for your patience with that, and hopefully you were able to figure it out. Uh, I haven't, I have to admit, I'm, I'm not really great with this, but I am not voting because I am neutral. I am the moderator for today's debate on PrEP is better than condoms in ending AIDS. And so some of you may have seen a slightly different title on the website earlier, but this is in fact the proposition, the statement that we are asking you to consider. I will go through some of the details of our debate and then I will ask you to vote. So please keep your mobile phones, smartphones ready. So in this debate we have two sides, the pro side or the yes team and the con side or the no team. The yes team is immediately to my right and includes Ms. Rina Janam Nuaisuk from the transgender program at the Tangerine Clinic at the Thai Red Cross AIDS Research Center in Bangkok, and Dr. Nitya Panupak. Oh, <laughs> Rina. And Dr. Nitya Panupak, as you met her earlier, the Chief of Search and Prevention at the Thai Red Cross AIDS Research Center. Dr. Nitya. The members of the CON team are to my far right, and first we have Dr. Professor Wiwat Rojana Pitayakon, Director of the Center. <laughs> Director of the Center for Health Policy and Management, Faculty of Medicine, Ramatibidi Hospital here in Bangkok. And then the final person on the CON team is Dr. Don Colby. 
our senior clinical research physician at SEARCH, the Thai Red Cross AIDS Research Center. And so the four of these individuals have been thinking about this topic for quite some time, partially because I'm a little compulsive and I emailed them at least six months ago to have us begin thinking through what these topics are, and they have spent time preparing a debate for you. So the structure of the debate, of the debate is over the issue of what is the role of PrEP versus condom use in ending AIDS with a focus on the Asia Pacific. So some of you are here from other countries. I was surprised to hear that over half of you are not from Thailand or here. And in fact, we would like you to think about this statement in the context of the Asia Pacific region. The audience, or all of you, will be asked to choose one of three different answers. So it will be A, B, or C. The first vote, which I will ask you to do in a moment, not yet, is A, yes, PrEP is better than condoms in ending AIDS, or B, no, PrEP is not better than condoms in ending AIDS, and C is undecided. The way that we do the vote is that we'll ask you to vote almost very soon, so have your phones ready and your application open, and we will not tell you what the vote is. I, I hope not. I hope we don't mess it up with IT. Uh, that would be my fault. But hopefully it won't, that won't happen. And we will ask for your vote now. And then we will tell you about the vote at the end after the debate is completed. So I'll explain to you a little more about the scoring. But first, I'd like you to have your phones ready. And I'm going to touch the vote key here. And if you agree, yes, PrEP is better than condoms in ending AIDS, select the option for A. If you think, no, PrEP is not better than condoms in ending AIDS, press B. And the letter C, if you're not sure yet, OK? So are you ready? I'm going to press the vote key now. Ooh, it's not very long. Okay, so I hope you're not going to show me the results. Can I hit next to go to my next slide? Is that okay? Yes? Okay, thank you. So the structure of the debate is that each of our debaters will have five minutes to give their opening statements with PowerPoint presentations. And we will rotate in a specific order that we have agreed upon in advance. Then we would like to ask you, as our audience, to have questions for us so that there are microphones towards the front and the rear of the conference center. So as you're hearing them speak, please feel free to think about the questions that you have to ask. We're going to try to take about 10 to 15 minutes for those questions. And then after that, the debaters will have two minutes to provide closing arguments or statements in a slightly reverse order. There will be no slides for that part of the debate. And then after that, we will take a second vote. And at the conclusion of the debate, what we're going to assess is how many minds have been changed. So not the majority opinion, but how many people changed their original vote based on the presentations here today. So this is just an example. It doesn't mean I'm on one side or the other. I rotated from previous years. So the amount or degree of change is what we're looking for. And I will later on ask you for the second vote. But now what I'd like to do is instead to in introduce our first speaker, who will be Ms. Rina Janam Nuaisuk. Our debaters will come up here to the podium so that they can control their slides. Thank you, Ms. Rina. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Please allow me to share you with um, next slides. Here are the most um, sexy person in Thailand. They've been voted by the public. Now, please imagine. Please pick one of them and imagine who you like most, and I will ask you the following questions. <laughs> now, the question one. If you are on a date with a person who wants to end the night with you by having condomless sex, would you say yes or no? <laughs> you can speak out loud, or you can speak with yourself. No judgment here. <laughs> Ready? Now, the following question is, regardless of your question, regardless of your answer to the question one, do you believe there are people in this convention center who might say yes and agree to have condomless sex? Now, you can speak out loud yes or no. Yes. 
I'm hearing more yeses, right? <laughs> so this means that not everyone can use condom constantly and correctly. We know that condoms have been introduced in the world or in the country for more than 100 years. However, in Thailand, we have 100% condom use campaign introduced across the country. And these projects led by Dr. Viwat on the opposite side. <laughs> and do you believe that 100% condom have been implemented with everyone? Yes or no? Uh, very, very little voice. Let's face with this reality. It might be too explicit for you, but this is the reality from the community that we are underserved. Here are the hundreds or thousands of the community online that promoting condomless sex. In the middle of the screen, there's a post saying that, although I've got condoms ready in bed, I'm always happy to go for condomless sex anytime. And on the right hand side, it's written in English and then you can read. I don't want a boyfriend. I just want a public bareback sex. Bareback means condomless. It's a slang word for gay and transgender women um, populations. But it's very interesting and exciting to see another comment at the bottom right. It's shining bright a lot, like a diamond. Then you can see that. Thank, this is brilliant. Thank you, PrEP. With, um, it, it, was not, um, it, was not a, it was not a proper sex. It, it was not a condomless sex. Now, we have to admit that not everyone can use condoms. And PrEP in this scenario play an important role to save his life from HIV. Right? Now, let's hear more from the communities, the communities that we are serving, and they are current PrEP users, and they are willing to share their own story with you all here. There's no voice. Let me see. Bear with me for a second. Okay. It's very exciting. <laughs> Technical difficulties get you a few extra seconds. Now, let's see, the truth is not the same for everyone. And let's face the fact that not everyone can use condoms due to many factors related to condomless sex. For example, Sister Foundation reported almost 100 transgender women in Pattaya, they were arrested because of they carry condoms. And condoms have been used as an evidence of engaging in sex work. And there are other internal factors related to condomless sex, substance abuse, lack of lubricants, and also is their decision making, making choice to sexual pleasure and exploration. In summary, key populations who are effectively, um, who are heavily affected by HIV burden across the country, and they are less likely to use condoms.
However, we cannot let our sexual morality to prevent them to access to PrEP or other HIV prevention methods. Promoting PrEP as another prevention method is important to accelerate and end to AIDS in 2030. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kun Rina. So our second speaker is Dr. Professor Wiwat Rojana Pitayakon, who will come and speak to us on the con side. Ajahn Ka. Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to thank the organizer. This, this thanking message should not be counted. Eh? Uh, uh, five minutes, right? Uh, to thank the organizer for inviting me to come here. I don't feel that I am attending a HIV medicine symposium. I have a feeling that I'm sitting in the room with the symposium on Bangkok symposium on PrEP. <laughs> and then now you are going to say something that, okay, nothing is equal to PrEP. PrEP is better than, I feel desperate. And this morning I met Professor Vapan in, during the break and he laughed at me and he said, uh, don't, don't be serious, Dr. Wiwat. We already know the results, so don't be serious. <laughs> I'd, uh, I try to repeat what Professor Prapan presented this morning. Actually, his presentation from the report to the chair up to the end, uh, or we're prep. And he'd, he'd say very quietly, small, single word about condoms. And in his last slide, in conclusion, to end HIV AIDS, condom is not there. So I feel surprised. Uh, I think the, for the goal number one, uh, that is pre prevention. I, I, I don't think uh, uh, PrEP can cover and condom can cover the goal two and three. But if we are working effectively, then the goal two and three will be successful. What I am going to request is that not to judge I think we should work together. And if you don't agree that uh, PrEP is better than condom, if you feel that it's equal, then you just please just vote no. <laughs> I try my best to compare between the two. And please count the number of items with red color, which means that PrEP is better. And the green color, which means condom is better. And after you count, you can make decision right away. Efficacy, okay. Uh, I, I saw you know, some intermittent type of PrEP low efficacy and some uh, very good compliance one which is not so common. It is common but not as, uh, it's not uncommon to see the, those with uh, not good uh, uh, com uh, compliance. So uh, this, in this part, people always blame the condom is not 100% effective. But in my lives, in my life when I treat thousands of STI, I never seen even single case who came and complained, doctor, I use condom, how, how, come, how, how come I have STI? None, not at all. So it, in the real life, when they use, it's really effective. But for those who are ineffective, they remove condoms uh, before they finish their sex. Or even uh, uh, just quickly after uh, removing, then they have again, have sex again. Yeah. And so it's it, uh, it not proper use of condom. So the distinctive characteristic is that uh, condom is not effective in drug user. So in carrying needle and wearing condom uh, will not be benefit, uh, will, not, uh, will, will not be beneficial. The cost is high. Uh, this morning we saw the figure of, of 100,000 uh, target persons of the PrEP. And please believe me that the cost for that 100,000 PrEP can spend for condom supply for the government in the next 10 years. And you can see, and now the, since the, it's the, the same amount of budget, you can see how it will uh, affect condom promotion program. Accessibility, when you come on, you can go to 7-Eleven or any convenience store for condom, but uh, you cannot see any PrEP products there. The, in convenience store. Target user, you're okay, people at very high risk. But uh, for condom, whatever risk you have, you can reduce by just using condom. 
and so uh, reputation is promising for PrEP, but we have to wait and see. But for condom, it's very sure, very clear. I will show in a subsequent slide that it, uh, move, it, it, there was a movement toward the end of HIV already in Thailand. Uh, additional health benefit, none for PrEP, but uh, a huge benefit from, from condoms. And, uh, and, and that, that makes some sort of, uh, uh, what you call, what I uh, was not happy about it was the collapse of STI treatment program here in Thailand. It just collapsed because no more STI case to come. And then the, now STI is coming again, and, and, and people say that, don't worry, we use PrEP, and then we let them treat STI. But the treatment system is not there. How can we do anything to, to stop that? And then uh, teen pregnancies and uh, cervical cancer, for example, that, that are the benefits of condom use. And then side effect, no, none at all, almost none for condom, except some allergic person in, uh, okay, uh, in, uh, in not, not many people will see that. And then, uh, but for short term and long term effect, I, I, I don't know about this, I, I searched from literature and I, I saw uh, many papers about this one. And then interference with sex, yeah, good to have sex without condom. But uh, when I promote lubricants, people even much love uh, than having, you know, what we call bareback. You know, so the, we, have, we have to way to improve sexual enjoyment. Drug resistance, uh, I, 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 I saw, you know, I typed in Google, PrEP and drug resistance, many messages come. And, and I, I, I feel, I try, you know, I, I seem to believe it, that it's true. And then uh, related complexities, uh, you need to go to the clinics uh, regularly to get to refill the drugs, etc. So my 30 seconds left, I just want to show that it's possible to promote condom. Now the effort is not there anymore in the society, but we need to revitalize it from 14% to more than 90 something percent. And this is the curve that shocked the world about the effectiveness of 100% condom use program with the coverage not 100%. We know that it's not 100%. We set that target. But uh, there may be some people who don't like to use condom. It's okay. But the uh, benefit is there. It's very clear. STI almost abolished, about, you know, became rare disease in Thailand because of that. And then it's, uh, HIV declining. It means uh, we are moving toward ending AIDS by just using condom alone without uh, AIV at that time. And it widely advocated worldwide including the, the message from a, a prime minister that five million HIV infection already averted or prevented. And you can imagine that how much money that we save from such a condom promotion program is very cheap. And now it's very clear that STI is increasing. Teen pregnancy is a big problem, particularly in Thailand, that uh, we need to vote no in order to preserve condom. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ajahn. And our third speaker is Dr. Nitya. Thank you very much. And um, first thing I would like to say is that I feel very glad um, that this great debate has made uh, Professor Wiwat to study and explore more and understand more about PrEP um, than before. Um, which is actually a, a very good side effect of having uh, this uh, great debate. I um, would like to start by saying that for me, there is so, so many um, reasons why I think, and you should too, that um, PrEP is better than condoms in ending AIDS. Um, many of you in this room may not know that condoms only provide 70 to 80 percent protective effect to HIV um, infection. 70 percent for anal sex, 80 percent for vaginal sex, and this is not surprising because um, it is very hard to prove that someone who's telling you that he or she is using condom um, all the time actually is using it correctly or using it 100 percent consistency. Um, <clears throat> and, but PrEP, however, can provide you with 100% uh, protection to HIV. And it's not only protection through, uh, uh, from vaginal sex or anal sex, but it's also, it's also protection from um, needle sharing as well. 
and there are growing evidence of efficacy, effectiveness of PrEP from randomized control trials from um, um, real life um, PrEP clinics. And among um, heterosexual men, women, um, MSM, transgender women, and also people who inject drugs. And if you wait until next year before you start thinking again whether I should implement PrEP in my clinic, um, the list of evidence will surely overflow um, this slide. Um, the second reason is that um, PrEP is one of the HIV prevention tools with forgiveness. Although adherence is crucial to achieve that 100% protection to HIV, adherence does not need to be perfect. By taking at least four PrEP pills per day, you can achieve almost 100% um, protection um, to HIV among MSM. And let's think about using condom four times out of seven times and what um, efficacy uh, from, from condom would you um, get. On the other hand, many of you also may not know that when you are um, facing a client who is telling you that he or she is using condoms sometimes, that equals you are facing someone who have an, an, an equal risk of um, getting HIV infection by not using condoms at all. So think about this. How many clients have you served so far who you missed to provide to offer these life-saving tools? How many of them might have already been infected by HIV just because you are too relaxed on how they report condom use to you? And how many of them might already turn away from HIV testing and counseling service just because they, they feel they could not um, follow your condom-only risk reduction strategy? This is very serious, and I, I would like to beg all of you to think about this. Thirdly, PrEP draws more people, people who have higher risk um, to HIV testing than condoms. And in ending it, we know that the first we know that the first um, 90, the HIV testing, is the, the important entry point to get people to treatment and to prevention. And by offering choices of HIV prevention tools, then condoms only at-risk people feel more comfortable coming out for HIV testing. And therefore, it will not be surprising if you start you, uh, doing PrEP program and you see higher uh, proportions of people coming to you not using condom consistently or have high rates of STI. That is the successful sign of a PrEP program. You need to, you have to bring these people out to the care, to the service in order to end AIDS. And lastly, PrEP forms the better packages for HIV prevention than condoms only. Um, because people have their own rights to choose if they would like to protect themselves by using condoms only, PrEP only, condoms with PrEP, or PrEP with a partner who have undetectable viral load, or many other combinations. It's their own choice. If you just open your mind and accept people for what they choose to be, you will see that PrEP is simply better than condoms in any age. And our role as healthcare providers is not to judge people from what behaviors or risks they choose to take, but to equip them with the best tools they can use to protect their, their own health. So um, offering condoms is, is only is not ethical anymore, and forcing someone um, to just use condom is, is um, it equals depriving them from, from their right um, to health. So I think it is time now for us to stop playing dumb that we don't have enough budget for condoms. Among those who are at very, very high risk for HIV, condoms is not their answer, and it is certainly not your answer in ending AIDS. So, be prepared to choose to think about this wisely and ethically. Which one you will vote for, Trump or Trudeau? Because you will have to bear with the consequences. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Nitya. And our final speaker will be Dr. Don. Thank you, uh, Annette. Um, so first of all, um, if we look uh, way back 25 years ago at the beginning of the, the AIDS epidemic and the beginning of the response to the AIDS epidemic, we can see 
big successes uh, through uh, uh, use of condoms and safe sex alone. So this just shows uh, uh, rates of gonorrhea in America long before we had ART, long before we had PrEP. Rates of gonorrhea in the US uh, decreased by 80% only through the use of condoms and safe sex. The same with syphilis. Syphilis rates in, in America declined by 88% with only condoms and safe sex. And here in Thailand in the early 1990s, we had the worst epidemic in Asia. In the early 90s, there were over 160,000 new infections of HIV per year. And through the phenomenal work of pioneers in, in the AIDS field, like Professor Prapan sitting in front of me and Dr. Wiwat, uh, who's uh, uh, debating with me today, they were able to decrease uh, AIDS infections by 90% alone, when their only tools were condoms, safe sex, and their, their will. And of course their will was the, the strongest there, uh, but for their, their clients, the tools they had were condoms and safe sex. So now I'm gonna give you the, the top 10 reasons that condoms are still important. Number one, babies. Now I like babies, I love babies. I have two sons, they're, they're the greatest thing in the world for me, but if I had to have a baby every time I had sex, I wouldn't have sex very often, and I think that's true for most of you as well. <laughs> Syphilis. We know that PrEP does absolutely nothing to prevent uh, uh, sexually transmitted diseases, including uh, syphilis. Condoms prevent STIs. No pills, no side effects. Taking PrEP means taking a pill every day. Sometimes people take them, sometimes they don't. You can forget. And every pill, no matter what's in it, causes side effects of one way or, or another. So with condoms, literally, there's nothing to swallow and there's no side effects. Number seven, gonorrhea. I'm not gonna talk anymore about that. <laughs> Number six, no waiting, just put it on. So we know that for PrEP to take full efficacy in males takes seven days. Uh, we know through, through Ipergay that you can get, get away with two days or two pills a, a few hours ahead of time, but it takes time. And that's for men. For women, it takes 21 days to get full efficacy uh, of PrEP. Beautiful Rena here, if she has a new boyfriend and she wants to use PrEP as her HIV prevention uh, method, she can say, Okay, you wait here, I'm gonna go take a pill. I'll be back in 21 days. <laughs> 21 days from now, he's not gonna be there waiting anymore. <laughs> Chlamydia, <laughs> herpes, <laughs> human papillomavirus, bacteria and more bacteria. So every orifice that you can think of that people use for sex is just loaded with bacteria. The mouth has 200 kinds of bacteria. The human vagina has 1 million to 100 million bacteria per ml of vaginal fluid. And of course the anus gets the gold star for bacteria. <laughs> that is a lot of zeros up there. That is a one followed by 12 zeros. That is one quadrillion, one quadrillion bacteria per gram of fecal tissue and more than 1,000 different species of bacteria in the anus. So now I'm going to bring you the number one reason uh, that condoms are, are still important. And I know you've all been waiting for this. Actually, this is my favorite, by the way. My God, sex is icky. <laughs> As I said, every orifice that you can use for sex is just loaded with bacteria. Um, everywhere you can put your genitalia is loaded with bacteria. Um, and don't you think that a thin layer of latex, as in a condom, between you and all that bacteria is a good thing? So remember, the condom is our friend, and vote no. <laughs> Thanks very much to our debaters. So now what we're going to do is open this up for questions. So I'd like to encourage people in the audience, I'm sure you had thoughts running through your mind. Why is Dr. Nitya so angry? Like, I think you can stand up and, and where did Don get those cartoons? Stand up and please uh, come to the microphones and feel free to ask your questions. And so while we're waiting for people to stand up and ask questions, maybe I can ask a question to the pro side. So we are, uh, we've been recently hearing about this major epidemics, not just here in Thailand, starting in San Francisco that we knew about, New York City in syphilis. 
And it's something that, that as a pediatrician, increasingly concerning for me because we're getting so close to eradicating congenital syphilis. Can you comment on issues related to behavioral compensation and the risk of increasing syphilis STI epidemic, in particular through, associated with PrEP? Is that a real concern or not a real concern? Hello, hello. Yes. Um, um, I, I think that um, this, is, this is a very good point and I think it's uh, still um, the concern of many of you in this room that um, we are seeing increasing rates of STI and now we are um, asking you to, to start implementing um, PrEP, whether that um, situation will, will worsen over time. Um, and I have to remind everyone that um, the increasing rates of STI um, that, that also the CONSITE has, has shown to us is something that we have been seeing before the era of PrEP. So people are not using condom as we expected them um, to do. Um, we have to admit that. So what we are, um, what we be, what what we will we will be doing here is that by offer prep, I believe that we are drawing those people who could not follow the condoms only strategy out to us, so that we can test them more and we can treat them more. And I, I truly believe that um, by doing this, um, we are helping you with reducing the um, number, the prevalence and incidence, not only for syphilis, but also for gonorrhea and chlamydia, which mainly are asymptomatic um, STIs. Thank you, Dr. Nitya. So when you ask your question, could you please introduce yourself? So, Dr. Linda Gale. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, my name is Linda Gale Baker from Cape Town, uh, South Africa. So my first question is to Dr. Wewat, is really do you think, because I think time and context matters a lot. So we're in an era where you can take one pill a day for the rest of your life and, and stave AIDS. I wonder if the 100% condom uh, campaign would have been as effective if the alternative to, you know, to getting HIV was, was death within a couple of years. Because although treatment had you know, we're sort of on the horizon. We did not have anti combination antiretrovirals as, as we know them. So I do think that that context is important. We're now in a, in a time when HIV is a low concern in terms of, a, of a, a terminal illness. So that would be my one point. The second point I think that is really important from where I come from is half the world does not use condoms because they can't. They don't have a penis or they are receptive. Um, so women, in Africa don't use male condoms, they have to rely on their partners. Um, and receptive uh, MSM also have to rely on their partners to, to use condoms. So I think it's really important we use this term use condoms, but it's not in my agency. And so I do think the discreet, the discretion that comes with PrEP is huge. Female condoms are there, uh, but clearly also not a discreet methodology. And so I think this concept of control is one that we should not underplay. And so I did want to just raise that issue of agency uh, because I think it is important that we use the terminology correctly. And I think, you know, basically most of the world clearly overcomes the ickiness of sex um, very well indeed. So, you know, I, I, I would just want to sort of put those two points. So maybe, uh, Ajahn, Dr. Wiwat and Dr. Don, if you could answer those questions related to sort of the environment being different today in, than it was during the 100% condo cap campaign, than some of the other topics that she raised, Don. Okay. Please. Uh, then, then I will answer the question. I, I think the environment is, the situation is quite different now uh, when compared to the past, the, when we have no treatment available, and not, uh, not uh, no ARV and then even no PrEP. Uh, then people feel that uh, they're desperate, they have to use something, and that's why they use condoms. However, uh, please believe me that uh, the first five years of my the 100% condom campaign, no technical expert agree that it worked. None. And I, that, that's the reason why I, I spent seven minutes to convince you. Even I spent five years, I, fail, I convinced no one. I, I, I wasn't able to convince no, no one until condom stood by itself and showed its, by itself that it's effective. And you, you, 
you thought the curve. Right now, I think that the, I'm not going to propose that just use condom and forget about others. But we have to work together. The term combination prevention still work. Uh, literacy education prevent huge number of people to engage in risk behavior. We, ne we never talk about it. But we say that combination include everything. But not to say that this one is better, please use this because this one is not good. Uh, like, uh, okay, efficacy, 80, 70, 70, is not good compared to 100%. In such case, it means you ask people to make choice. But we don't want that. Uh, even in the CDC uh, uh, paper, CDC recommendation, it says, please continue to use condoms uh, after even you have PrEP. So we want both to be equal. But then the, uh, the message I, I, I heard regularly say that condom uh, uh, can fail, blah, 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 blah. And uh, then the make the four people to make, just select one. We did not a combination. I think we have to change this type of mindset. And e even when we have treatment, then we propose and make people, uh, let people make choice. For me, if I want to have sex just one time, just single time, it's more easy for me to use condom, right? I, because uh, at my age, it's very difficult <laughs> to have sex uh, every day. But then uh, I have to take drug for seven days and wait until I have sexual uh, the, the, uh, uh, urge and then go for just one sec and then have drug for four more weeks. How come? I'm not as high risk like that. So the, we have to work together. It's not unethical to promote condom and it's not unethical not to promote PrEP. But it, it is ethical to to make choice and promote both. Both are equal. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to go ahead to the, thank you, I'm done. So the question in the back, on my left. Um, uh, Jeremy, I work with the uh, Amphal's Treat Asia program in Bangkok. Um, so firstly, I'd like to congratulate all the debaters. They were very uh, informative and, and, and particularly entertaining um, arguments that were put forward. And I have a question that I'd like to address to the pro side. Um, and this is more a, a kind of policy or program related question. Um, I think, I think we, it, it's clear that PrEP is a relatively expensive intervention and uh, we all work in, in a context of, of limited resources, whether they're financial or, or human resources. Um, so perhaps um, a, a member of the pro panel um, could comment on, on the potential or concerns associated with um, PrEP programs diverting resources um, uh, from, uh, from other effective prevention programs. <coughs> Um, that, that is really a great question, and I know that in our region there are so many cost-effectiveness study on PrEP um, um, going on. Um, but I, I think that um, doing the type of cost-effectiveness um, for, for PrEP is not easy. It's not easy, especially if the mindset of, of, of people who run this study is not very clear of, of how we would like to position PrEP. It's, it's very confusing, like Ajahn Viva just, just, just um, showed his confusion to all of you. No one is telling that we are promoting PrEP only. So doing cost effectiveness in a way that we compare PrEP versus condom should not be a way to go, but it's, it, it has been happening. And, and the results will be coming out um, in, in a way that, that this, is, this would not be very much cost effective. In uh, addition, some cost effectiveness study also include um, ART as prevention versus PrEP. And since the cost of ART and PrEP is, is, is almost very similar, you will not see that PrEP is more effective than, than um, ART because you are giving PrEP to more people um, than to ART. This type of cost effectiveness, if does not include the cost of the quality of life that would be lost if you were infected um, with HIV. I, I don't think that would be a, a very good thing to do. So I'm not a, a, a fan of cost effectiveness study. For me, it's, it's the issue of cost, the cost of PrEP. If you use the cost of the, the true WADA in, in your model, that's one thing. If you use the cost of generic drug, which is available in, in our country, that's another thing. And if you drive down the cost further, then that's almost the different world of, of cost effectiveness study. Thank you. And we'll take these three questions of the people who are standing, then move on to final comments. The front microphone. 
Um, I'm Dr. Skanda from University of Malay and KL. Um, I share uh, Dr. Nitaya's passion with PrEP, and you can, you can see her passion exuding from every pore of her skin. <laughs> um, so, you know, congratulations, Nitaya. Um, but what I wanted to just probably just make a couple of comments rather than asking questions. When Rina opened up initially uh, with her presentation of um, being presented with somebody at a time where you had to decide where you were able to negotiate safe sex practice, I think she would have ideally already been prepped up already three weeks prior beforehand. And I think the, when you talk about individual cases, PrEP allows users to um, be more in control of their HIV risk before they encounter that situation, whereas condom is very situation specific. You may not be prepared for that situation, but PrEP allows the user to already have controlled their HIV risk so that when they encounter themselves in that situation, they're already protected. So they know that they are protected, and that's very important for the end user to know that. The second point I wanted to make was on syphilis. Now, the rise of syphilis uh, and STIs, we, we know that it's unfortunate. I mean, uh, Nitaya makes a good point about the fact that um, the STI rates were already much higher in the beginning before uh, clients started PrEP. Um, but the rise in syphilis, particularly in MSM globally, and especially in the US, is also largely driven by oral sex and not necessarily unprotected penetrative sex. And majority of people would not choose to use uh, condoms for oral sex. So I, mean, I think that's another point. Uh, are people prepared to use condoms for oral sex to prevent STIs above and beyond um, penetrative sex? Um, my third point is, <clears throat> with the con side, I mean, why is it so difficult that PrEP cannot be viewed as maybe the new condom of the 21st century. You know, the efficacy is so great. Um, and I think from a healthcare provider perspective, is often, I think we're evolving our discussions around whether you have to use PrEP and condoms. Really, the situation is really evolving. Is, um, as, as Dr. Nitai clearly pointed out, you're giving patients options, um, either PrEP or condoms or, or either, but really leaving it in the, um, in, in the realm of the patient. And my, 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 last, my last comment is, um, you know, the 100% condom provision in Thailand and the successes as a result of it is highly um, worthy of praise. I mean, at the time, it served a huge um, unmet need, and it's changed the epidemic immensely. But I think, you know, and I, I can understand the, the situation in a country is very much the same. People are very hard to let go of um, uh, a proven intervention that's worked. But we now have PrEP, and it's a new intervention that is highly efficacious. And we really need to think about ways of, 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 of you know, how to really implement it in the grand scheme of things. And I think I end with my four comments. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Iskandar. We'll move to the back microphone. Hi. Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Rang Sumar from Division of Global HIV and TB Program in Thailand. So um, I would like to congratulate for the debaters for a very informative uh, talk and discussion. So I have one comment um, and question for the pro side. Uh, according to World Health Organization that recommend that PrEP, oral PrEP can use as an additional prevention for a population with high incidence of HIV are uh, greater than 3%. So my question is, uh, when, uh, for this debate, how about, I would like to hear more your comments about the populations that had lower HIV incidence that should we also still recommend PrEP as, rather than condoms, and in terms of the public health program for implement na as a national program. For example, for adolescents, uh, what would be your comments and recommendations for those who have lower incidence of HIV? So Whether you still recommend to use PrEP or not? Thank you. Okay. Um, um, I believe that the number set is, um, is not for 
the implementers in a way that if you are prep providers, but it's more on, on, the, on, the, on the programming um, level. Um, so for me, um, as example of Thailand, um, evolving into um, the, the period that we will include PrEP into um, as part of the national healthcare um, insurance scheme. Um, the, the criteria uh, for someone who will be getting reimbursed for the PrEP and PrEP related um, costs uh, would be someone who have risk behaviors. Um, so so I, I don't think that um, we are using that um, incidence thing um, in, in, in a clinical setting, but more on the um, behavioral um, eligibility criteria and, and, and not even the risk group criteria. So not only MSM, transgender women, but anyone who practice unsafe um, sex, unsafe sex. Yeah, I'm not saying unprotected sex, unsafe sex. Thank you, Nitya. And final comment from Ajahn, Dr. Prapan. Uh, I'm very glad to hear that Dr. Wiwat, my colleague, it's the first time that he and now in a public way that PrEP is one of the prevention package. <laughs> the first time I heard that, so I'm very glad to hear him saying so. Because in the past, he always said, you know, we should not use PrEP, we should use condom. We need more budget, more money for condom, okay? I heard also that, you know, uh, in my absence, that he always said that Dr. Prapan, you know, a famous doctor, always, uh, 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 campaign for PrEP, not condom. That's not true. What I try to say in the past is, we have invested so much, so many years in using condom. We know what's, 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 what, what's happening here. Okay, we still cannot end HIV AIDS uh, the way that we want to do. So we, I said, you have to say that we need to, if we, if we want to uh, invest anything more, we have to invest on PrEP. I'm not saying that we should stop budgeting for, for condom. That's not, not, not what I'm saying here. So PrEP and condom and many others should go together, okay? So my point is, you know, if we're going to invest anything more, we should not just invest only, only, only on condom. We should invest on some other innovative things here, PrEP. So for example, Dr. Watt would say, the reason that Thailand still has a higher STI or uh, HIV, because we don't have enough condoms to be used. Uh, in the uh, sex venues, in the schools, in the colleges, and so on and so on. So he tries to ask more and more budget for condom. So my question to me what is, if you have all the budget that you want, how can you make those people use condom consistently? That might take us more than the time we have, but Ajahn <laughs> Wiwat, do you want to make a, a brief, brief response and perhaps can continue the discussion later as well? Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, I heard from the Panu Park family. Uh, <laughs> uh, that uh, both of both of them feel happy that I that I attended this meeting to listen to prep. But please believe me that I attend so many meetings on prep already. And uh, I I used to be director of HIVS program in Thailand, the first director. And whatever intervention when we have, I always happy because uh, we know that we have to make prevent, to, to prevent. But uh, when I feel uncomfortable about what Dr. Prapan just said, because in one meeting he was sitting with me uh, in the ministry, no, in the uh, in one way big venue, and he laughed at what people discuss. He said, "Why people still talk about condoms? The time of condom is already over." But why people talk about it? So I feel, because uh, Dr. Bahan, when he says something in the public, people listen. So I have to warn the public that uh, we have to give chance to condom as well. Because when I, I travel to countryside, people came to me and said, condom not available at all, but yet not available. And even in the National AIDS Committee, which I am a member and Professor Bahan is advisor, uh, we asked for additional fund. And the, 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 the members there, the secretary of the nature said, agree, 200 million for condoms, but, uh, but. but at the end, no money uh, failed to get from the budget bureau. But then we are talking about monthly, monthly million for, for PrEP, and then uh, in the meantime, we ignore condoms. And the way that uh, Dr. Nitya presented in many meetings is to make people make choice. 
because this one is 70 percent effective, man. this one 100 percent. You make choice. If I were you, what I, what I, if you were me, some, something like that. We, we don't want to see that. We want to see that, okay, both are okay, both are good. Not say that PrEP is better, because we, we, we know that it's not true. Why? Because PrEP is good for MSM, for some high risk group. But for those lower risk, you just single sex or three sex per month, and you just use three condoms instead of having a huge budget amount of, of, of drugs. So at the end, I, uh, to conclude, I, I am pleased that uh, I have a chance for the Tano Park family to listen to me <laughs> in this event, and so that we can go together, both are good, and not to say in the public anymore that PrEP is better than condom, but say that we, these are the two interventions that really work. Condom saved millions of lives already, it's not bad. But then we have a new intervention. Why, why don't we discuss on how to go together with these two things? Please vote no in, 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 in that case, because otherwise condom will be obsolete in this country. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rewat. And I think we will consider that if it's OK in the interest of time, your final statement. So very briefly, one sentence, I'm going to ask you to go around. So Dr. Ms. Rina, you're next. Um, Yes, my last word. Um, as a transgender woman and a member of key populations, it's my privilege to be here standing or sitting in front of all of you. Um, I'm not here to win the debate, though I still need your vote. <laughs> I'm here to raise the voices from the communities, the communities that are heavily affected by the HIV burden in the region. By respecting their rights, not only their rights to health, but also the right to participate in decision making that directly affect their lives. We can make positive impact, accelerate and ends to AIDS. Let's make a history together today and unite as one. Thank you very much. And now, uh, Dr. Don, your final statement, please. Okay. Uh, so uh, I want to say uh, first that uh, we've heard some very impassioned pleas about PrEP today on, on the stage from Dr. Nitya, down in the audience from Dr. Iskender. And I would say I, be, I agree 99% with everything that they said today. Uh, and PrEP is good. I have absolutely nothing bad to say about PrEP at all. But we have to realize that the, the statement is, is PrEP is better than condoms. The, 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 the con for that statement is not that condoms are better than PrEP. The, the con for that is really that, that condoms are equal to PrEP and that PrEP and condoms both have an equal role to play in what we all call combination HIV prevention. Anytime anyone talks about HIV prevention in, in any way, whether it's PrEP or anything at all, we always talk about uh, combined efforts. And uh, as Dr. Wewat said too, and as Dr. Nitya showed this morning in, in her slide earlier, um, in who gets uh, HIV in, in Thailand, 40% of the people who acquire new HIV infections in Thailand are not in high-risk groups. They're in that other category. And that other category is never going to be a, a target for a PrEP program. It's never going to receive free PrEP from the government or from anybody else uh, at all. So we have to realize that there's a very large percentage of people who are at risk for HIV but are not at high risk and are never going to receive PrEP and need an, an, an alternative uh, method for HIV prevention, which is condoms or safe sex and other things as well. So I'm asking you to vote no, not because condoms are better, but because condoms are equal to PrEP. Thank you, Dr. Don. Okay. Our last final brief statement from Dr. Nadea. Um, so we, I think all of us, all the debaters here agree of the term combination HIV prevention. And although PrEP is better than condoms, <laughs> I'm totally in with the combination HIV prevention. And I believe that all of you here um, also have that, that, that same thought and share this, that same thought with me. And I, I would like to, to, to share with you um, what um, our Buddha taught us. Our Buddha taught us to do not believe in anything merely on the authority of your teachers or elders. <laughs> in, in the countries like this in, in our region, we tend to, to listen to the elders. And sometimes, without any evidence, without any um, 
um, shared um, 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 interest, we, we just believe them. So our Buddha taught us that we only accept it, accept, accept what we um, are, are, are thinking of, only after observation and analysis, and you find that it agrees with reason and is for good and benefit of one and all. So I think this applies very well to us. And now, please think back about Trump and Trudeau <laughs> again, and vote wisely. Thank, Thank you very you much. Nitya. Okay, so please have your phones out immediately. I'm going to hit the vote button. You will have not that long. Get ready to vote. Vote now on the second vote. Yes, PrEP is better than condoms and ending AIDS. No, PrEP is not better than condoms and any AIDS. If you've become even more confused after this debate, you can vote undecided. Okay, so... We don't even know. I have to say, in all the years that we have done this, this is the closest vote that we have ever had. The change in yes went from 32% to 38%. If you can do your math, that's a 6% difference. The change in the no vote, which is the letter B, went from 41% to 50%, which is a 9% different. So if we look at not only the change, but also the, the larger part of the vote, in fact, our con side, Dr. Wiwat and Dr. Don, win the debate. Can, can, can I say some words? <laughs> I, I would like to request <laughs> Professor Prapan to keep Dr. Don. <laughs> Don't remove him. From, the, from, from Red Cross, please. <laughs> thank you so much and thank our debaters. That was a very vigorous, interesting discussion. And now we have the Satellite Lunch Symposium. Lunch boxes are available yeah, yeah, outside. Yeah, yeah. If you could please get your lunch boxes and quickly come back inside. We have a great program for you that will start almost right away. So, Quickly get your lunches, quickly return, and the Satellite Lunch Symposium will start right away. Thank you so much. <laughs>